Hello, I'm Daniela. In today's video, I'm going to show you how I slow stitch a little element using embroidery floss, just to make a little square, or a rectangle if you'd like, using the satin stitch. Now this is a beautiful little stitch that will make either a very elegant and flat piece out of embroidery floss that almost looks like it's made out of satin, or it can be made very chunky using all six strands of embroidery floss as opposed to just one or two. It's a beautiful and very important stitch to use in your slow stitching pieces. Now there are some tips that I show along the way, but in today's video I really emphasize making a little shape, a standalone little square, to use in your slow stitching. You can use it as a filler stitch, you can embellish your piece with a bunch of them, making all these little squares in either various colors, different tones of the same color, or the same color to match your slow stitching. I'll show you how I create the square, and I'll show you how I add it to an existing piece. It's just a little kind of element to add to your slow stitching that really makes your work pop. So let's get started. So here is the little satin stitch square that I use in my work. As you can see, you can use them in different sizes, clearly different colors, and you can even use rectangles. It's a beautiful stitch, and it just adds a little something to your work. Here's an example of how I use it. It's just a very subtle element. I picked up the greens from this project here and just added it over here as an additional layer on this layered fabric. So it really adds just a little bit of something to your work. It's a very simple stitch as well. Now, by using this, I wanted to show you the variations you get from using different number of threads of embroidery floss. So if I use all six strands, which is what comes on a standard skein of embroidery floss, I get a really thick result. And it's quite beautiful, so that's the six. And then the number one is just gorgeous. It's delicate and subtle. And then these are the variations using that number of stitches in between. The two is very effective, the three starting to get a little chunky, and so on. So I keep this as a reference guide, particularly for this stitch, but just in general. Today's video though, we're going to take an existing project, and I'm just going to show you how I use this stitch. So I have this little layout for making my stitched cameras, and I took a vintage camera design here, and I just want to incorporate those colors, and again, repeating that shape. So over here I'll create a larger square, and then I think I'll create just a couple of smaller squares beneath it maybe one over here. I like to create the little outline in the ink because it just gives me a little more of a guide to use. And then I'm choosing my colors. Now I have this red embroidery floss here. I have three strands and I have another um, needle threaded with two strands. I'm going to start with the three strands first and I'm going to use my largest square. So I like to just start by knotting the thread and then coming down in the corner of my piece. And then I'll just create that long stitch. Now if my shape is any larger than this, I won't tend to use that straight stitch. I'll break it up a little because as you can see it can buckle a little bit. And I don't want to pull it so taut that it's creating so much tension on my piece that it causes the fabric to pull together. So there is a little bit of subtlety to it. Now you could always go under, again, the bottom piece here, but I like to not waste thread, so I'll come up here at the top piece, and I'll come up just next to where I came through for that base stitch, and then I'll stitch down. And I'll continue this all the way across this shape. I'm careful to keep my stitches very close together. And again, I'm careful to go side by side. Now, if I do leave too much of space in between, I can always just go back in and create another stitch and fill in the spot. It doesn't have to be perfect. Obviously, I'm trying to get it the exact way I want it intentionally first off. But if I leave a little gap, that's okay. Now, if I don't make it exactly the shape I want, it will look a little wonky. And for this particular project, 
Wonky is not a bad thing. I have a bunch of little wonky shapes here as well. But if it's a particular project that you're set on getting a particular exact shape, well then you might have to pull out stitches if you find that your shape is not looking the exact way you want it. So over here I have a little too much space between those stitches. So I'll just come back in and sew one or two stitches in between to fill up that space. Sometimes I don't mind skipping that space and just filling in areas where I need to. And so that's another method. So there I have my stitch shape and I can just stitch it on the back to knot off the end of that thread. Now if I want to make a precise shape, and I'll take my red thread with two strands here, the first thing I want to do is stitch a perimeter around that shape. And there are many stitches you can use for this. You can use a straight stitch, you can use a back stitch. What you want to do is just create the exact shape you want to make. So I'll just use little back stitches here. And here I have the perimeter of my shape. Now it's a little bit off, but that's okay because I'm going to come in here now on the far left hand side of my shape and just refine the shape using that satin stitch. So I'll take my stitch and bring it down here. And I'm going to come up right through my perimeter stitch. And now I'm going to fill in that shape to get that beautiful square. And again, if I skip a spot, I'll just go back and fill it in. And if I made too big a gap with that stitch, I can just go back in and fill it in as I go. And there I have a beautifully stitched square. I'll do the same thing with two more of this yellowy green color and then my piece will be finished. So there's my completed work. I have all my little stitch squares using that satin stitch and it gives a very interesting result. It's just a subtle little effect that you can use in your slow stitching and just keep in mind the number of strands of floss you use affects the result making it thicker or more delicate. And so it's a really interesting effect. I think a whole piece made of these satin stitch squares would be pretty intriguing in itself. So that's how I create the stitch square to use in my slow stitching piece. It's a fun little element that will add a touch of brightness to the piece depending on the colors I choose, the size that I make, and the number of embroidery floss strands that I use. I really find it very versatile and helpful in my work. If you've enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe. Consider joining me on Patreon to learn additional art techniques, including watercolor and paper arts. Thanks for joining me today.